Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Dear brothers and sisters So inshallah today uh, we'll talk about uh, credit the, the last part of credit assessment Where we'll discuss um, the uh, quantitative assessment of credit And also we'll talk about the credit scoring So when we look at the quantitative method And this is mostly applied to uh, business financing where uh, small businesses uh, uh, or companies, uh, small companies, they uh, apply for credit. So how we will assess their financial assess uh, financial statements. So uh, basically we look into these uh, four ratios, which is a li uh, liquidity ratio because we want to know the current uh, financial position, how much cash the company has so that it can uh, meet its financial obligation and also the efficiency ratio which is ultimately very important because uh, how much the company is efficient to sell its uh, products uh, so, it, um, so the profitability and the survival of, co of the company will depend on its efficiency and the profitability, of course, uh, a business cannot survive without profit. So we we'll see uh, the the profitability of the company, and finally, the the most important is the debt ratio. How much the company is debt against the assets that the company has. So. Um, I believe most of you are familiar with uh, this type of ratio analysis. So first, we'll check the liquidity analysis where uh, the very basic and, uh, ratio is the current ratio, uh, uh, where the current ratio will give us how much uh, cash the company has, okay, currently has against the current liabilities. So in order to get that, uh, we need to get the current assets of the company and then we need to divide it with the current liabilities so we can get the current ratio. So if a company has a higher ratios, uh, uh, comparing with its industry average, so it is better. If the company has a lower ratio, so there is a warning sign there, it means that the company uh, uh, may face difficulty to pay its uh, short-term liabilities. However, if the company has very high uh, current ratio comparing with the industry, it may also give a uh, indication that maybe the company's management are not uh, using the money properly, means they are not uh, really efficient. Okay, uh, well, uh, when we talk about current ratio, in current ratio, there, is, uh, there are some uh, deficiencies because current ratio includes the inventory and also the prepaid expenses. And uh, the quick ratio is better to know. Uh, another name of quick ratio is the, the acid test. So this one will give us more accurate result because uh, it will give us more uh, the assets which are more uh, close to the cash. So they, it will uh, de uh, detect the inventory and also the prepaid uh, expenses. So as we know that uh, uh, inventory sometimes uh, may not be sold, it might not be liquid. So uh, a quick ratio will tell us how much uh, time, in, uh, okay, uh, the quick ratio will give us how, how much cash the company has without uh, selling the inventory of the company so we just uh, uh, take the total uh, current asset minus the inventory and also we did need to uh, minus the prepaid uh, expenses that uh, the expenses that we have already paid and we need to divide it with the current liabilities so we'll get the uh, quick ratio so quick ratio actually will give us the the more uh, accurate result on the company's liquidity position because um, we mm, the company may not uh, uh, the inventory of the company may not be uh, sold on time so after the liquidity analysis uh, we'll go to the the efficiency analysis okay how the efficient the company is and there are a few criteria to 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 know that few ratio analysis 
The first is the account receivable turnover ratio. So account receivable turnover ratio is a ratio that will tell us how this company is efficient to collect its, its debt. Okay, how uh, fast the, the customers pay back the debt to the um, to the um, to the company. So if the customer uh, uh, pay back faster so it is it means uh, uh, good for the company so in order to uh, um, get this we need to get the net credit sales and divided by the the average uh, accounts receivable so uh, average account receivable so if there are uh, in the financial statement if there are two or three years uh, uh, um, account receivable so we need to make it average if but if uh, there is only one, so we just take that one, uh, okay, uh, as average. So we get the net credit sale divided by uh, the average uh, account uh, receivables uh, to get the uh, account receivable turnover. So with that, we can know uh, how uh, fast the company is uh, get uh, can collect their receivables. So if the uh, if the ratio is higher, so which it, it is positive, means the company uh, can, um, comparing with the industry, this company can uh, get more, uh, okay, the, this company uh, can uh, get back the receivable faster. And then the second is a very important is the asset turnover ratio. Okay, so asset turnover ratio is, uh, it will tell us how, uh, how using the company's asset, how much of the company's asset, uh, how much the, they can make sales. Okay, so that is the uh, um, uh, okay the most uh, efficient, uh, uh, ra most uh, important efficiency uh, ratio of the company. So it will tell us that using the company's asset, okay, how much the total asset. So using that asset, how many uh, uh, time they can make the sales in a given time. So with if it is uh, so, if uh, we get higher than the industries, means that the company is better than other companies. If a lower ratio means it is uh, the company is not that efficient, means it is uh, it is taking more asset to to produce uh, more more sales. Uh, and then inventory turnover uh, turnover ratio. So this ratio will uh, tell us within a given time how many times the company can sell their inventory. So in order to get the inventory um, turnover ratio, we need to get the cost of goods sold. Okay, some of them uh, can get uh, sell, but it's better to take the cost of goods sold and then uh, divided by the average inventory. Again, average inventory we will make only average when the uh, we get final statement for more than one year if not we just take the one that we get so we take the cost of goods sold we divide it with, with the average inventory so we will get uh, how many times the company can uh, turn um, okay they can sell their inventory in a, uh, in a given time uh, usually within a year so it's a higher ratio is better a lower ratio is uh, is not good and the, finally, the day sales in inventory. Uh, so this one uh, uh, will give us, um, our, uh, will tell us how many days uh, of the year it will take for the company to sell their inventory. So we take the ending inventory, uh, okay, and then divide by the cost of goods sold multiplied by 365. So uh, uh, we'll get how many days it will take for the company to sell their inventory. So if we get the number of days is more, so of course it is actually bad for the company if we uh, compare with the industry and we see that this company taking more days to to sell their inventory comparing with the industry then uh, it means that this company is not performing well that is not efficient but if the company uh, taking less number of days so it means that uh, this company is efficient comparing with the industry however um, actually uh, we cannot uh, we, we need 
to always compare with the industry average because different industry got different uh, uh, days uh, sales in inventory. Usually, the retail shops, supermarkets, they have very uh, they they sell their inventory faster comparing with uh, uh, like furniture shops or um, uh, some other sh um, shops that uh, sell uh, very uh, a few uh, number of products so with the efficient so efficiency analysis actually will will tell us uh, the actually how uh, the the strength of the company uh, if a, a company is efficient so it will lead to profitability and also uh, uh, maybe the liquidity and others and then the profitability analysis okay how uh, profit how much prof, uh, profit the company is making okay the first is the profit margin ratio it is this profit margin ratio will tell us okay how much profit the company is making per sell okay so uh, we need to get in order to get this we need to get the net income divided by the uh, net uh, sales okay so what is a high profit margin ratio is better and low pro profit margin ratio is uh, is bad however we need to remember here that sometimes some companies uh, their profit margin is higher however their roa means return on equity or return on asset might be lower uh, so uh, uh, it uh, so it means that profit margin uh, if even though a company's profit margin is higher it doesn't mean that that company is making good profit okay May, uh, because profit margin will tell us only the pro how much profit uh, the company makes per sell however if the sale of the company is not much uh, so they don't have overall um, much profit uh, in the long run overall Okay, so in order to get the overall uh, profit, we need to know the ROA, okay, the return on assets, okay, so using how many of assets, how much profit they get. So again, is the total asset they use, how much their profit. So this is the, uh, the most important, uh, I would say, the criteria to know the overall uh, profit. So we need to get the net income divided by the average total asset. And then another important uh, criteria, uh, um, ratio is return on equity. Uh, using how much of the shareholders' equity, uh, the, uh, okay, uh, so um, uh, how much profit they are getting. So uh, this is also important for the, for the shareholders. Okay? Uh, and also it is important to know uh, okay, how much the, um, uh, the company is giving profit to the shareholders uh, and uh, comparing with uh, 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 using the, the debt, okay? So uh, in order to get this, we need to get the net income uh, and then we need to divide it with the uh, shareholders' uh, equity. So it will give us uh, how much the company is able to get return using the shareholders' equity, return on equity ratio. And finally, not least, but the most important one is the is the debt ratio. Okay, means how much uh, debt the company has. So, in, if a company has a lot of debt, of course, it is a uh, it's a red sign for the financial institutions to give them loan. So, we need to see uh, how much is the the debt ratio of the company and comparing with the. Uh, industry okay I again different industry has different types of debt ratio okay the manufacturing companies or house developing companies they have higher debt ratio uh, comparing with the uh, retailer shops or supermarkets okay so uh, in order to get the debt ratio we need to get the total liabilities and then we need to divide with the total assets okay so if the answer is one it means that uh, asset and uh, the liability is similar to the asset. If it is uh, less than one, means uh, the the liability is actually less than the asset. Okay. 
and if more than one means the company has more liability than the asset okay and then when uh, we get the answer okay so if we get higher answer means it is bad okay means it has a uh, high liability comparing with the industry many students they make mistake they sometimes do not notice when they see the company uh, this uh, the given company's uh, debt ratio is higher comparing with the industry average and they say it is good or positive but not okay if a higher ratio means it is bad the company has uh, more more debt comparing with the the other companies in that industry okay so if a low debt ratio is is always better so these are all the the uh, ratio analysis that we will check uh, to to know the um, uh, the efficiency the debt uh, the debt and also the liquidity uh, and also the profitability of the company so again uh, all these uh, ratio analysis will uh, uh, will uh, vary from industry to industry so it is very important again to compare with the industry and also uh, to uh, also use our common sense okay well, if a company is a, if a company has a very high ratio so me, me, uh, debt ratio means they are uh, very close to uh, bankrupt maybe uh, all right so we move to uh, credit scoring models okay so uh, this credit scoring is something uh, between qualitative and quantitative credit scoring is is a way to to quantify the qualitative uh, information okay so this credit scoring uh, mostly used for personal financing for retail financing is not used for businesses because uh, businesses is uh, is needs uh, deliberation and the credit officer it needs a credit officer who has a lot of experience and who understands the business very well okay but credit scoring uh, is just to make uh, things faster for retail customers for for personal uh, for persons who uh, apply for for loans and this credit scoring is very important nowadays to get a uh, loan uh, okay for application so uh, we need to always think about our credit scoring if we want to apply for our next financing so this uh, credit scoring techniques are increasingly being used by lending institution for credit assessment because of the development of the software and because of a uh, lot of customers okay and to cut the cost they these are becoming very popular so what is this credit scoring all about so these they are actually uh, a statistical method of ranking okay so based on certain criteria they will rank uh, okay based on uh, a method of ranking the the probability of an unknown outcome okay so unknown outcome means the probability of default okay the loan of is paid uh, or um, or defaulted by allocating a point system to known variables so in this credit scoring system they will uh, have some variables or some uh, Okay, criteria or standards so on and they will give marks for each of those variables and if somebody passes that uh, the minimum score then he will be eligible to get credit okay uh, the credit information of an applicant is assessed and graded numerically to gain a total score so here uh, everything uh, will be judged by by the marks okay and then so there are some characteristics as you know that uh, we are uh, in an age where the informations are available and there is a issues related to privacy so financial institutions when they rely on information we must uh, rely on, uh, we should not rely on prohibited information okay and the information use uh, must be statistically justified so whenever we will use this software We'll develop the software to assess. We must know that we just uh, get the information which is allowed. We cannot break people's privacy. And then uh, we, we also take the information which is statistically justified. Means from the uh, research, it is known that these are the uh, important factors we need to know. Okay. The information used uh, should contribute positively to a client's credit ordinance. So our focus should be on credit ordinance so information we get only for 
credit ordinance. So with the information which is not our concern, we should not uh, take into account. We should not take into account how many girlfriends, for example, the customers have. Okay, uh, for example. The ultimate aim of any credit scoring technique is to improve the quality of the loan book that a financial institution maintains. So uh, this credit scoring, the ultimate aim actually uh, that uh, the loan book that the, the financial institution performs better, they have low number of default cases and, uh, and then uh, they don't have to resort to the collateral, uh, okay, because it will uh, require time and then um, costs, legal costs and others. And finally, the reputation as well. Okay, so uh, so what are those the variables that I have, uh, have um, okay in credit scoring that they use? First, uh, the financial institutions after you apply for a loan, okay, they will immediately get your financial report from credit bureau ratings. In the case of Malaysia, it is uh, Sikris or Sitos, okay. So they 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 have a record on your uh, credit history. And then they will ch uh, check whether you ha have home ownership or not. If you own a home, it means uh, you will have a you will get a good score. And then the income bracket, your income level between what either is it five to ten or you know ten to fifteen. And then how many number of uh, deposit accounts or saving account you have. So that is you know of course uh, good. If you have more saving account, okay, uh, more so it is of course uh, is a uh, good. Uh, for, for you and the type of occupation, what type of job you are doing, usually government employees or high level executives, they will have higher, where the low, uh, low skill employees, they will have, or students, they will have lower score. And then time in current job, okay, how many years you have been in this job. So the more the, if you are experienced enough, so you will have higher number of uh, credit scoring. Okay, so let's look at this uh, central credit reference information system, which is the credit rating uh, agency in Malaysia, okay, the Bureau. So it contains the credit information of about 9 million borrowers in Malaysia. It means all of us who borrowed from any financial institutions, our record are there. And all the financial institutions in Malaysia uh, are required to submit a monthly credit report to of all their borrowers. So all the financial institutions are actually giving updated information to Bank Negara, uh, this secrets, uh, if any whether a customer is paying on time or late, okay? And then financial institutions upon any credit application can request for the credit report. Once you as a customer apply to any financial institution, they will immediately request to secrets to give uh, your credit report. So usually uh, in the report, even you and uh, uh, nowadays uh, the secret report is available to all. Even you yourself uh, can check your credit report through secret website, or you can go to uh, Bank Negara or the Bank Negara in Trenganu, uh, and they can show you your credit report. Usually they will have your outstanding credit, means how much a uh, loan you have right now. Okay, and then your payment history of last 12 months, whether you paid back your, your loans on time for the last one year, and special ac attention account, whether you have any account that needs special account means uh, there is a problem. Well, either you paid back late or you are going to default that needs special attention. And then application for credit, whether you have applied for any financing in the last 12 months. And also, finally, uh, for the students, it's very important. Par Badanan Tabong Pendidikan Tinggi National, the student loan, or we call it uh, PTPTN, whether you are, uh, how much you have borrowed, how much is your outstanding, and whether you are paying back on time or not. So these are the information will be there. Okay, so this is the usually the example of the report. Okay, where a person how, uh, okay, he. Um, uh, Okay, so you can see A, number, outstanding credit. Okay, B is the approval rate, uh, C is the status. Okay, so uh, they will give all these uh, details. Okay, so now let us see one of the example of credit. Uh, 
uh, scoring okay so here is uh, from this one is taken from uh, from a uh, from a practitioner okay it is actually a real example from a bank okay so they will put, put uh, okay uh, they will rank uh, these variables so at first they will see the customer's occupation or line of work so if the customer is a professional um, or a business uh, employee a business executive so they will give a uh, 100 okay uh, see for professional you got 100 here okay for professional okay but if a part-time employee only got 20 if student only got 50 clerical work okay it's a normal clerk got 70 okay and then they will look at the housing status if you own a house you got 60 but if you don't you got 40 and then uh, if you live with friends or relatives so you get only 20 then the credit rating means the rating from secrets if your rating is excellent you get 100 if average you get 50 no record you got 20 if poor record you got zero and then the length of time in the current job okay so if more than one year you got 50 if less than one year you got 20 and then length of time in current address how long you are uh, residing in this area okay in this house if more than one year you got 20 if less than one year you got 10 if you have telephone at home you got 20 if not you got zero number of dependents uh, this is uh, interesting if you know uh, no dependent you got 30 if you have one dependent 30 if you have two dependent you have 40 okay and if you have three dependent also 40 if more than three dependent then it will reduce to 20 okay so actually all these based on actually the historical analysis so they uh, they study different uh, default cases so from that uh, they take the statistics and they analyze the data and they see that those who have three dependents they are more likely to pay back comparing those with those who have uh, more than three dependents so that's why they give this score and then deposit account if both uh, checking checking is uh it's like current account where right? easy to take out money and uh, put uh, and put money saving is a, a bit restricted to to withdraw the money okay so if you have both saving and current account checking account you got 40 if you only uh saving you got 30 checking account you got only checking or current or current account you got 20 so you uh, they will give marks and then at the end they will add up all those mark and if somebody got 280 or less so his application will be rejected and if got 290 to 300 he will be given uh, he will be given uh, $1000 only as credit okay uh, if uh 380 so you'll be given um 3000 so if the highest is somebody get 410 so he'll be gi uh, given 10000 above okay so probably i guess this is for personal financing us uh so 10000 is 40000 ringgit let's say okay so this is how it works okay the the credit scoring system so again this uh, works only for for personal financing uh, or not personal financing means for retail customers uh, if they take a house financing or car financing or personal financing okay so there is uh, like secrets there is another uh, credit uh, credit as a reporting agency which is called uh, CITO, uh, credit tip of service which is called uh, CITOS okay you can see the link below in the YouTube okay here uh, to know uh, more details of this uh, the CITOS how they work so they also uh, give the report mostly 35% for the history of previous loan payment and then right now uh, and 30% is on amount owed okay and then credit uh, and then 15% on the how long 
you you have a history of credit means when you, uh, you borrowed and when you are paying back okay and then uh, another 10 percent of credit mix means what type of loan or financing you are taking you have a house you're taking car you are taking personal financing so that will be uh, considered okay and then new credit uh, okay whether you have applied for new credit or not low lately so it will get uh, you'll get uh, get 10 percent okay and you uh, if all after adding uh, all these if somebody got 745 to 850 consider excellent 714 good okay and 525 is very weak 300 is okay uh, very weak and maybe the person will not get any financing Okay, so now if we compare between the, this scoring technique and traditional uh, just mental method, so we can see that the scoring technique is very precise. It's to the point. You just put the information in the, uh, in the software, okay, so, and the software will give the marks. So it is very precise. But traditional is, is just mental interpretation. So it's, uh, it takes the credit officer's opinion, okay, and uh, it, that's why it sometimes uh, depends on the credit officer's mood or sometimes it can may have also uh, involve, you know, uh, what you can say like corruption sometimes. Uh, the credit officer may ask for some bribery okay because uh, it depends on his opinions uh, okay so uh, comparing with th that situation the credit scoring is is better and then uh, up, uh, with this scoring uh, second it is you know fast and less expensive okay of course uh, you know it reduces the papers and time and okay the software within minutes will give the marks Okay, uh, but traditional method is a con time consuming and also expensive because it, uh, the bank needs to hire more credit officers. Now the software can do the work of many credit officers. And the co management control, you see, uh, with this uh, uh, scoring method, the, the top management can directly handle. Okay, they can set the policy, define the policy, they can. Uh, ask the developer to develop the suitable software and they can handle it. However, for traditional adjustment method with using credit officer, it is quite difficult to set policies. You know, sometimes it's qualitative. We don't know whether the qual uh, credit officer will implement or not. Okay. And monitor. so similarly, uh, the sc credit scoring method is easy to monitor but traditional adjustment method is also difficult, okay, to define the scope of improvement, okay. However, uh, we still need the, uh, okay, credit, credit scoring is good uh, and it is precise first, uh, okay, it uh, reduces the cost, uh, so uh, it is good. However, there should be a limitation of use. Credit scoring is only for individual customers, as I said, uh, so that uh, that does not need a lot of, you know, uh, deliberation okay but traditional adjustment uh, is still needed especially for business financing and also you see the machine cannot detect everything you see now the COVID-19 so uh, if uh, somebody his business uh, is in problem and he applies for financing the credit scoring method may can show good but the traditional adjustment method can tell yes this is a time where his business is going to default maybe okay let's say he's doing uh, in uh, his uh, business in tourism industry for example so uh, we also need a traditional adjustment method but with the credit scoring method we can uh, handle a lot of individual applications we can reduce the cost but at the same time the traditional adjustment method is also uh, important so I think that's uh, all on the, uh, uh, so we have already discussed uh, the, the quantitative assessment of, uh, of uh, credit, okay, using uh, the financial statements. And also we discussed the, the credit scoring techniques uh, uh, for, for, for credit assessment. So with that, I thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.